Hey, welcome back to Emlyn in the Mix. Bit of a strange setup today. I've got the MacBook Pro on this keyboard stand here. And I'm going to be showing you today how to use Logic Pro X using Apple's Touch Bar technology um, and just how well integrated and featured it is in Logic Pro X. Very cool indeed. I've got the screenshot here and I've got a really weird configuration. I'm going to work out how to do this properly one day. Um, just with my iPhone pointing down on the touch bar so you can actually see it there. Let's get stuck into a project that I'm working on and I'll show you the functionality of what the touch bar can do in Logic Pro X. Let's go to the screen. Alright guys, here we go. I've got the touch bar up on the screen here. You can see Logic Pro X Transport is available and it's really responsive. Uh, if you have a look. Really no delay. Keep that over and over. Go back here. Let's go back out of here and you can actually go, you'll see you've got four different options in Logic Pro X. So the first one I'll go over is your mixer. Now your mixer is going to display your level and sends based on the track you've got selected. So for example at the moment I've got the flow motion. Um, so if we press play, actually we'll go back to transport, oh actually I didn't need to do that, I can just press space bar here, go back to our mixer, alright, so go to level, effectively I can turn that up and down, Alright, we'll try here. There we go. Alright, so you can see the level here is affecting. I've got the arpeggiator selected here, which is the flow motion on the screen. And it just works like a regular fader on an iPhone. So that's very nice indeed. Very nice little feature. You can play with the mixer. Now, the only one thing which I do have a complaint about is that I can't actually go through each track uh, in the touch strip bar here which would be awesome, the touch bar but Apple doesn't actually allow me or I can't work out how to do that like I can press back here, gets me back to my normal functions um, go out of that and yeah I can't actually go up and down unless I use these arrow keys yeah so that's good, if I use the arrow keys that'll move us through, you can see there on the touch bar looking at each individual track um, but for the time being, it would be nice not to actually even have to touch the key bed here on the MacBook Pro. Uh, actually just being able to touch the touch bar and then change on the fly would be really cool and would actually make this very awesome for playing live. Alright, so let's move on. So it's very basic functionality, obviously. Uh, obviously, the more inserts and effects you have, you can see here on this current track I've landed on, which is Liverpool. Uh, which was a baseline, I think I got rid of it, but um, you can see we had a bit more access to actually more of the mixing functionalities here, um, low and high, and this is just based on, I think it's, let me just have a look here on the screen, um, which insert that actually is, yeah, so that's actually one of Logic's soft synths, so that's actually going to have a little bit more functionality than the third party VST plugins. Um, but still very cool and I will delve into that in another video today I just want to give you a really quick look on whether it's worth getting uh, the MacBook Pro uh, for the touch bar reason um, to be honest I I mean I love it it's very cool but it's still a little bit gimmicky in my opinion um, and the other thing is if you got a lot of processing going on which I sort of do at the moment so I've got the screen getting recorded as well as running Logic Pro X here um, so the processes are running quite hot and the touch bar actually gets quite hot to touch and can be quite dangerous. I mean, it's not going to burn you, but it is it is reasonably hot that you will not want to touch that touch bar uh, as often. And uh, that also makes it hard for if you want to use this as a live type thing. Uh, again, making it a bit more gimmicky and for the fact that you can't really touch it when it goes like that. So it does have a sort of screen saver mode, so it went a bit duller there. Now I'll show you, you've got the four options here. Obviously the next one is your transport bar. Now unfortunately because this is only a loop, I haven't really got much that I can show you here, but I can swipe my finger and you can see that it's going to move the transport 
and the playhead, sorry, and we're going to be able to move through the track. So if I had a bigger track, this would be really useful because I could actually just slide my finger through the track. Um, now, one thing I will do is we'll go back into our transport here. I'll turn the loop function off and we'll go back into transport. Now, wherever my playhead is, it should play from there, basically. I'll just press spacebar because I can't get back. I mean, I can get back to transport, but it's just another thing I have to press. So there you go. And then I can just move it like that. So that's, that's another really cool feature. Oops, sorry, just accidentally pulled up the piano roll. Um, that's a pretty cool feature and it could be useful if you've got a really large project and you need to get through or get to a part that's at the end of the track. Um, so very basic, that's all that is there. Um, we've looked at transport, which is number three here. Obviously, you've got your usual functions here, which are really cool, loop. Um, I don't know why it's doing that, I think it's having a little wig out, anyway. Now the last one I want to show you is the keyboard. Now this is only good, I'm just click on that, or if it, oh wait, sorry, that one doesn't have a keyboard, that's why, so we click on that, there we go. So now we're looking, I've got, this is only applying to soft synths that have keys, uh, VST third party plugins, and all of the plugins that actually exist inside Logic Pro X would obviously be able to be played as well. Um, so literally, this is an arpeggiator though. I wonder if I can multiple key. <laughs> That's actually very cool. Like I can get right in there. I mean, they're mini. There's no actual feeling of touch in terms of what key I'm pressing. I'm literally just having to look here. But um, you can play polyphony, which is very cool. So multiple touching um, allow me to play chords, which is very cool. <laughs> go and got my looks like I can got my octaves here on the left um, just by clicking these arrows um, can easily get back out of that get back to the transport um, actually we'll go back to keys I want to show you some one really last cool thing I want to show you here is actually if we go to drums now this is cool so if you've got a drum loaded you'll see here kick and you got I've got all my percussion here and I've even got, I don't know if you can see on the left there, but I can swipe that and I'm going to get more percussion. Now I've got velocity here as well, I can turn velocity up full. So that means when I touch it, it's going to give us our loudest velocity possible on that particular percussion. Um, go along here, we've got more. Oops. <laughs> That's the thing, now they are tiny and you are going to make little mistakes. And it's good that you saw that because that, that is a possible mistake that could happen. Especially if you decided that this was something smart to do live. Um, I'll just open that screen back up there. Ah, oh, did it again. I'm pressing the numbers here, so that's obviously changing our window size. There we go. Oh, three gets us back to number, that's good. Sorry, it is a little bit shaky on my touch bar camera that I got set up there. Anyway, look, that's what I wanted to show you today. The functionality, it does go a little bit deeper than this. Um, obviously, with the soft synths that are on board in Logic Pro X, you're going to get a little bit more access to more of their features like um, attack, decay, sustain, release, so forth. I just wanted to show you guys what the touch bar does in Logic Pro X. I thought you might find it interesting. Leave a comment in the comment section below if there's something else you want to know about the touch bar and what functionalities it can actually do uh, in Logic Pro X. I haven't dared to look at any other doors. I don't know if it's even integrated with Ableton Live or Cubase or any of the other doors or Pro Tools for that matter. Um, but it definitely is, as Logic Pro is an Apple product, it definitely is integrated with Logic Pro X. Alright guys, well look, I mean... This was just a quick overview, but my opinion, and if it matters or not, that's up to you guys, but I feel it, it is a little bit gimmicky. Um, it is rather small, and it would be cool if it had pressure sensitivity, much like the iPhone, so it had like a velocity after touch would be un freaking believable Then you could start thinking about this as a serious live uh, musician's 
talk of instrument. Anyway, thank you so much for joining my name on in the mix. Sorry about this lighting, it's a little bit crazy. It's summer in Australia, it's really hot and probably sweating. Um, but please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment in the comment section below, like the video, and you know what to do. Till next time, this has been Emlyn in the Mix. Peace out.